Achilles tendonitis is extremely difficult to treat, and patients who are suffering from this disabling condition are always looking for new treatment options to get back to being physically active. In this video, I will review the latest clinical trial data examining whether injections of PRP work for Achilles tendonitis and Achilles tendinopathy. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. Now, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. So the first thing to point out is that Achilles tendonitis is actually a misnomer. The preferred term that we should be using to describe this condition is Achilles tendinopathy. And the reason for this is because the term tendinitis suggests that the condition is caused by inflammation. However, histological studies have shown that there are no inflammatory cells in those who suffer from overuse tendon condition. So instead of Achilles tendinitis, the preferred term is to use Achilles tendinopathy. This more accurately describes a chronic repetitive stress injury involving the Achilles tendon. And because an overuse or repetitive stress injury involves micro tears that slowly wear down the Achilles tendon, it makes sense to use platelet-rich plasma or PRP to treat this condition. After all, PRP has been shown to have excellent results when used to treat other tendon problems in the elbow, such as tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, as well as tendon problems around the hip, specifically for gluteal tendinopathy. So does PRP work for Achilles tendinopathy? Let's look at the evidence. This study was a randomized control trial comparing platelet-rich plasma injection to high volume injection, as well as to sham treatment. And they found that treatment with high volume injection or PRP in combination with eccentric training in chronic Achilles tendinopathy seems more effective in reducing pain, improving activity level, and reducing tendon thickness and intratendinous vascularity than eccentric training alone. So it seems there may be some promise here. However, the results from this next study provide Provide conflicting evidence. This was a randomized control trial comparing platelet-rich plasma to placebo. And the authors report, PRP injection did not result in an improved visa A score over a three-month period in patients with chronic Achilles tendinopathy compared with placebo. So when we have mixed evidence like this, the next step is to aggregate the data from multiple randomized control trials to increase our sample size and do a larger analysis. This is called a systematic review and meta-analysis. These authors did just that and published their findings in the Foot and Ankle Journal last year. And they found that the results showed no difference in clinical outcome between the PRP and the placebo group at different points in time using the visa A score as outcome parameters at three months, six months, or 12 months. They conclude that PRP has no clear additional value in management of chronic mid-substance Achilles tendinopathy and therefore should not be used as a first-line treatment option. So it seems current clinical trial data does not support the use of PRP to treat Achilles tendinopathy. With that said, more trials need to be done. The previous systematic review and meta-analysis only included four studies for a total of 170 people. Despite aggregating and pooling together the, the data, the sample size is still small, and perhaps we just don't have enough data to see an effect. In addition, it doesn't make sense that PRP works extremely well for tendon problems in one part of the body, like the elbow, but has no effect on another part of the body, like the Achilles tendon. But the reality is that's what the clinical trial data currently shows. And because of that, I don't currently recommend PRP as a first-line treatment option for Achilles tendinopathy. Now, with that said, if a patient comes and tells me he or she is adamant about avoiding surgery or that the patient is not a surgical candidate, then PRP seems like a safe treatment to try. Whether it works or not remains to be seen, and hopefully more clinical trials are done so we have more information. Now, if you are interested in learning more about PRP, check out my video where I answer some of the most common questions that I get about platelet-rich plasma. Thanks for watching.